Hello, welcome to the Unpacked Traveler podcast, where we unpack the wonders and challenges of long-term travel, so you can feel empowered to embrace this lifestyle in your most confident way. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited for the second episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed the first one. It has been so funny and fun to record these. I'm so nervous. And <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. And I love it. Um, so yeah, in this episode, I really want to talk about what's my life? What is to be a nomad? There is many, many people that know what it's like to be a nomad, but maybe don't know the reality of it. And there's a lot of people who just don't know what is a nomad. A lot of people ask me like, I never know where you are. What do you do? What's your job? Where are you traveling? Where do you sleep? Where are you staying? So I'm going to answer all of these questions with the reality behind it, of course, always. And so, yeah, let's get started. So basically, a nomad is a person who doesn't have a home. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's a person who travels, but they don't have like, um, how can I say this? Let me ask Chab GPT for help. Okay, according to chat DPT, a digital nomad is someone who uses the internet to work from anywhere in the world, living and traveling in different places while doing their job. They're not tied to a specific office or location and they can work from cafe cafes, co-working spaces, or even the beach. Yes, chat DPT said it. <laughs> I love it. That's true. I couldn't have said it better. Um, so that's what I do. I work remotely for a company. It's an American company based in Texas. They do real estate and I do their social media marketing. Social media marketing is a big, big job among digital nomads. And I actually have a list of very popular jobs among digital nomads. A lot of people ask me that. A lot of people ask me, uh, what's my job? What do I do? How I got there? And honestly, it's my intention to help everybody build the same, this, you know, same free lifestyle. I'm all in for that. So if you do want to become a digital nomad, I think the most easy way is just network, honestly. Get to know people who do the same. Um, show them what are your skills are. They'll probably have somebody they know or some company they know wanting to have or to hire a new person. I think if you get your word out there, um, that's how I got my job. That's how my boyfriend got his previous job. And that's like, honestly, I think the most effective way to do so. I have a list of very famous and popular work among like jobs among uh, digital nomads. So they're freelancing, writing and blogging. Their web and graphic design that's really famous. Programming and software development, digital market and SEO as I do, online teaching and tutoring, consulting, coaching, e-commerce, photography, videography, translation, and data analysis, among others. I think um, there are a lot of companies that nowadays they're going into this mindset of hiring remote workers. And um, yeah, just put your word out there, manifest it. You're going to make it if you really, really want to. I'm going to talk about my experience being a digital nomad now, how it feels like, what the challenges are, but also the positive science behind it. I think it's really nice um, to share all of that with you because many people might have a misconception of what how yeah what it is to be a digital nomad and how it feels like what do you, you don't have a home what like my mom asked me that so I, I get it you know like it's a very specific and rare and special lifestyle so so yeah I'm gonna talk you through how it feels like to have this lifestyle so yeah um I've been a digital nomad for over a year now and honestly there is a little thing that I really want to talk about I don't really like this term like I don't really like to to say to people like oh I'm a digital nomad like first I can't even pronounce digital in a nice way I can't I can't do it <laughs> I prefer to say nomad or just like I travel or I'm a traveler. I really think it fits much more than the digital nomad kind of term. Um, so anyway, I've been working and traveling for over a year now. The job that I do currently is um, I actually it's not a very special story how I found it. It was, of course, through networking. So my boyfriend back then, he was doing 
the same job that I do right now for the same company. And he wanted to go to Berlin to do music uh, studies. So he needed to recommend somebody and he recommended me. I was looking for a job back then and it, re it actually it perfectly fit because this company, they emphasize building relationship with their employees and building their professional side more than their experience. So it was perfect. Like everything that I know that in regards to digital marketing right now, I've learned from then, which I'm so grateful for. And um, so, yeah, that's how it began. You know, like I was in the States, I was living as an au pair and it was not easy, you know, like being an au pair and being, wow, I feel like restrained. I feel contained I feel like in like a jail not in a jail because it's not as bad as it sounds also I was living in an amazing house with like working for rich rich Americans but I felt contained in my calendar you know like as I mentioned in the first episode I I didn't like being like told when I could have days off, when I could work, when I should work. It felt so, so bad not to have the freedom of my own time. You know, my time was in somebody else's hands, not mine. And if, it, if, if this actually, actually is still to this day, it feels so wrong for me. I just don't get it. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I decided to have a, a remote work and not only remote, but also with flexibility of time because I felt like I'm much more productive when I get to choose when I'm working instead of just working because I have to in like in the certain hours, you know? And this type of job also takes skill, takes responsibility because being a nomad is traveling to many amazing places and having to work. Honestly, that's the reality. It's not touristic. We are not going to be every day just traveling and going to restaurants and visiting museums. Like the day to day stuff is that we have responsibilities. We have to work. We, ha we still have meetings. We still have deliveries. We still have stuff to do. Um, also, like in the personal side, even with the podcast, we still need to work on the podcast, work on our passion projects, work on our hobbies, even when we're traveling because that's the difference right between a tourist and a nomad is basically we do this for a living so our life our hobbies our responsibilities they cannot wait until the travel is over so we can get back to them we have to keep on doing them while we are enjoying these amazing places with this amazing food and people So it's actually like a really hard balance to have sometimes. I remember when I was in Tenerife, it was an amazing place with like such a nice swimming pool, nice beaches around, the sun's always shining and I, I needed to work. I had meetings, you know, like I had French classes and that's part of being a nomad. Like we have to deal with this. We have to learn how to be responsible and how to commit with our stuff. Otherwise, things just get messy, you know? Um, and also another challenge that I usually face being a nomad is just the lack of routine. Like it depends on the place that I'm going. I, when I arrive, I have to feel the vibe of the place, you know, and is it like a, is it in between in the middle of winter in Europe? Because if it is, I'm going to work at night because during the day we have shorter days, shorter periods of sunshine. This is really hard to say it, by the way. <laughs> And of course, I'm going to enjoy the sun. And then at night when I'm, it's dark early and, I, and I'll go work, you know. So it's, it's also like a feeling that you have to have and the lack of routine, which honestly, it matches my personality. I don't really like routine. I think it's boring. So it actually fits so well that I'm really happy when I have to feel the vibe of the place and like change a bit of my habits so I can just live in a new way every travel that I make. It's very special for me. And if you can relate to that, then it's a really, really good sign that you would be a good nomad. <laughs> um, and now a positive side to counterbalance the negative ones that I've just mentioned, which is obvious. You're in new places every month or as long as you want to travel. And it, it's amazing, you know, to be working from such beautiful, special places. I've been to Tenerife and I was working in an amazing co-living 
I'm going to explain what co-leavings are in the next few episodes, so hold on tight to that. Um, and I was just facing the ocean and the blue skies and their garden with like banana trees and like all these trees, all the, the, the plants that I don't know because I'm a city girl. <laughs> it was just just such an amazing feeling to be working from these places. And before that, I was in France in the middle of the Alps, so I could see the snowy mountains from the window. And it's like, this is an obvious positive side you're all the time in these amazing cultures eating these amazing different foods watching these amazing sceneries experiencing their culture in such a positive way in such a deeper way than tourism would allow you to so for me this is like it tops anything honestly <laughs> but of course with that comes um the lack of home of course, this isn't also obvious for me that I'm leaving this and I have to face this all the time. I think for me is the hardest of the challenges not to have a home, not to have a base, not to have a place for my stuff. Like, fuck, I can't buy anything. That's that's what I'm saying, you know, like I can't buy anything because I don't have anywhere to put. A lot of nomads do have storage, though. My budget is low, so I don't currently. My storage is my boyfriend's sofa, literally. I, I, I put everything that's mine in his sofa and it stays there until I get back to see him. So it's really like um, a weird feeling, you know, a lot of people don't deal well with that. They, if you have the budget, you can, of course, have a home, but also travel. Um, some people have their home base in their mom's uh, house or the, their parent's house. Um, I don't because Brazil is far from everywhere that I'm traveling and my boyfriend is currently based in Europe. So that makes things easier for me. But it is a weird feeling, you know. And what I do to honestly make things better is I stay in places longer. I, that's why long-term traveling means so much to me. Because after I stay in a place for longer than three weeks, I usually am feeling at home. Of course, it depends on the place, how it makes me feel, and the structure of the place. Important as fuck. But it's usually better than staying in a hostel for one week and then moving out and moving in. This feeling, long term, it's not like I, I can't do it. I've tried. That was my mistake when I began traveling is I thought traveling was just staying a week or 10 days or maybe two weeks in the countries or in hostels, especially because, of course, again, my budget has always been low. Um, so, yeah, for me, that that's until I discovered co-livings and long term travel and traveling for long periods, I, I wasn't happy traveling. That's that's the truth. I knew it was what I loved doing. I just felt like I was not doing right. And that came to reality once I found long-term traveling, nomadic living, um, places that can have a structure for nomads, for working, um, that has co-working, good internet, nice activities to get to know uh, the other residents. So all of that, I think um, there it's not, there are nice lessons that I've learned that I really wanted to share with somebody or with you guys because... I had to learn it by myself. I had to do it the wrong way so I could learn the right way. So if you do want to become a nomad, talk to me. Tell me about yourself. I hope you find like the best uh, travel way that you can, you know, be happy while traveling. It's important to get to know yourself first and then get to know your style of travel and the one that would make you happier. So yeah, I just mentioned activities to get to know other residents and I think that's also a positive and a negative side you are always meeting new people all the time you're meeting new people every time you travel especially if you're solo traveling you're never solo traveling that's the reality <laughs> you're always meeting new people so for me, I'm a very, very outgoing and social person. I get recharged if I'm speaking to people, you know, I'm this kind of person. So it, again, matches my personality really well. I love getting to know other cultures, other people, other ways of thinking, other stories. And um, 
But of course, there's challenges to that. It gets a little tiring to always introduce yourself. Um, yeah, especially if you're in a co-living or a hostel where you have like many people arriving, many people leaving. Um, sometimes you make friends with somebody in like, I don't know, two days, which is crazy that happens. I love it. And then a week later they're leaving and then there's somebody else coming and arriving and you have to make friends with this person again of course not make friends just make acquaintance right um so i think this is also very very a very very interesting part of traveling and being a nomad for me i love it but there's people who are a little bit like more lone wolves so i know they they struggle with that a little bit more so that's another challenge or not It depends on you. <laughs> And before I move on, I just wanted to ask you, if you're enjoying this episode, please, if you could like it and share it with your friends, it's really important that you do that because first, I get to know that you're listening to this and enjoying the, the content. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, I get to know you and I don't know, just have a, a bit more of a proximity with you guys. And um, it's really helpful because I do want to have this podcast as my full time job uh, someday. And it feels a little well way uh, right now. I just don't want it to be like that. Um, so I just want it to happen, to make it happen. And I really need you guys' help. So please like the podcast on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel rate the podcast with five stars on Spotify and follow me on Instagram. Share with me your story. I would love to get to know you better and answer your questions. I'm going to open a Q&A on my Instagram so you guys can ask questions and I can do a podcast episode only on your, your questions. And I'm really excited to do all of that and help you guys and inspire you guys with my story. And yeah, if you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to let me know. And I'm 100% going to try to help you. So yeah, now that we got that covered, let's come back to the positive and the negative sides of being a digital nomad. I think I'm going to talk about like a challenge right now that for me, it's really hard. And I think a lot of the people who are traveling or who live abroad can relate, which is just being away from family, away from loved ones, away from best friends, away from boyfriends and girlfriends. Um, this is really tough, guys. This is um, one of the hardest parts, I think. Um, I really want to do a whole episode on that and maybe interview some friends of mine who could share their experiences regarding that and how we manage, right? Because... There is a lot of therapy involved. There is a lot of phone calls involved. There is a lot of like text messages unseen, honestly, and misreplied. And oh, it's really tough to be to have to be on your cell phone all the time to be with your family. You know, I think this is really challenging. So lucky are the ones who can travel back to home frequently because my budget, again, right now doesn't fit so much. And the ticket to Brazil is really expensive to go all the time. And I know a lot of people also can relate to that, whether it's uh, the budget um, or whether it's uh, because of work. Um, so, yeah, I think this is very challenging. You know, if you're really close to family, if you're really, yeah, if you're really close to your friends and see them all the time, this is a challenge. But also there is always solutions to that, like um having phone calls with your friends and just like make sure you're present if you do so you know there's also the difficulty of being too much on your phone talking to your um talking to the people you left and not enjoying the present and what this pre the present is offering you so i think it's important to have a balance uh among these two things and just feel yourself you know get to know yourself for me it's easy to, to call my mom call my mom once a week but for other people they have to call it a bit more often and My best friends, they understand already the reality that I live in and how I work. <laughs> and they know that if they catch me like once a month, they're like, they know I'm good. Um, so yeah, just get to know yourself, get to know your loved ones better and understand how it works for them. Also for you to be away, I think it's really important to have this open communication with the people you love. So everybody knows that you love them. You're just living your life. It's not 
about lack of love. It's just being present and enjoying, enjoying the life that you created for yourself. And to finish up the episode on a good note, of course, I'm going to share what I think is the most important thing that travel gives me among everything, okay? I think I really get to know myself when I travel. Um, I get to know, of course, many beautiful people and amazing people and nice, interesting people. But you know that saying that what you think of somebody else is something that you think about yourself or that the other is a reflection of you. I really do believe in that. And when I travel, I get to know so many new parts of myself. I get to know how I handle difficult situations, how some people can trigger me and what these triggers are and how I deal with uh, new people, how, how long it takes for me to make friends and how long it takes for me to feel comfortable in an environment that's totally brand new. I think it's the most important thing that I take to my travels is this awareness, is just this, um, this curiosity to get to know myself better than anyone or anywhere. It's really interesting to go to all of these places and understand who you are in this new culture, in this new weather, in this new little house that you're living in for a short amount of time. And it's and that's why I travel, you know, the amount of growth I've had, the amount of self-discovery, the amount of stuff that I learned about myself in these three years of travel, it topped anything. It topped any experience that I've had. So honestly, that's why I say when we unpack our bags after a trip or a travel, we're unpacking a new version of ourselves. We're unpacking new discoveries, not only about the world, but about ourselves. We're unpacking new connections that we've built with other people, but also with ourselves. We unpack new learnings that we've had in this month or week of traveling, you know? That's what is most, most, most special for me regarding travel. So I think that's it for now, guys. I This is my second time recording a podcast, so I'm sorry if I mumble. So I'm, I'm sorry if there are cuts, weird cuts. So I'm sorry if I say things wrongly. I, I'm just doing it with my most authentic self. I really think that's the way we can conquer and be present and be happy with the stuff that we create and put out to the word world so if you are enjoying this if you listened to this episode so far i'm really really thankful i'm really really grateful for you please help me share this uh, with your friends if you really enjoyed it please let me know it's really really helpful that i know that people are listening to this it's really encour encouraging And I just want to keep on doing this and inspiring and sharing my story and my learnings with you all so you can all can travel anywhere and learn about yourself more than anything. Thank you so much for listening and I hope to see you on the next episode. Besitos!